Is Korean culture getting so popular that now there are no more Korean-only spaces for Korean Americans? Let's talk about it. Yeah, there was a really viral thread on Asian American Reddit titled, No More Spaces for Koreans and Korean Americans Anymore. This guy goes on to say, by the way, he's he's venting. He's aware that he's venting. He says that uh, Korean Americans, we, they went through so much from the grandparents' generation to the parents' generation with the riots and everything like that. They're still dealing with a lot of decades of de generational trauma. But now, in 2023, they're almost considered a privileged Asian because Korean culture has almost reached the heights of Japanese culture, mm. where it's almost almost like everybody knows it, everybody consumes it, everybody loves it so much, it's so trendy and like cool and chic. So David, it went, he's saying how it went from rooftop Koreans to Koreans. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and that switch has been very stark and almost difficult for him to digest, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And then he goes on to say, now there's white people explaining what my culture is to other white people who look at us like we are some rare exotic creature rather than a human. There are no Korean spaces that are not overrun by non-Koreans and white people. This was not the case a decade ago. Koreans were able to find other Koreans and confide in their hardship, at least other Asian Americans. I know I'm, sound, I'm sounding tribal and exclusive, and I know I'm definitely living up to that stereotype about Koreans being unwelcoming, but this is absolutely how I feel. And this, Andrew, post went viral. All right, guys, we're going to delve into this, the comments section, our own insight, because I kind of feel like I've seen, I, I know what he's talking about. I've seen this happen. I've seen it myself, obviously, having been in some Korean spaces for some time. But please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pot Boys. Um, but also what goes really well with Hot Pot is... Smala Sauce. You can go check it out right now, smalasauce.com. We got pre-orders that are finishing up very soon. If you guys want to see more content, check out the Instagram page or the shorts that are going to be on our YouTube channel coming up. Yeah. I mean, actually, what's interesting about this post, Andrew, is I was asking uh, my Korean friends the other day. One was tw uh, 30, one was 20. I was like, what do you guys think about Korean culture becoming so popular? It's almost reaching like another plateau right now with all the K-pop artists doing songs in primarily English. Mm -hmm. New Jeans, Super Shy, Andrew Jungkook, his last two singles have no Korean in it. And I was like, what do you guys think? Because these Korean artists are charting higher than ever, but the product, I guess, in a way is less Korean than ever. And they were kind of lamenting this point uh, I mean, it's somewhat with different details that this guy is saying. Like, they're almost witnessing the downside of their culture becoming so ubiquitous and so universally loved, at yeah. least select parts of it. I mean, I'm sure that there was a certain feeling you got when you walked into a Korean space, a K Korean barbecue, a pocha, a bar, whatever, and, like, everybody was Korean, or at least they, if they weren't Korean, they were an insider. You know, versus now, if you go to a lot of spots in Korea towns, obviously it's filled with a lot of non-Asians. It's and not it's a lot of race. people's like first yeah. time, right? They're yeah, like, it's not about like the race, but it's just saying like they're not, they're either seeing Korean culture on a very shallow level or they don't even know Korean people and they're coming to these spaces. And that's not wrong because obviously we have business owner friends who are Korean and they overall like it because the market is bigger for Korean products. Right, their economic pie to draw cash flow from is much larger than right. it ever was. But right? they also acknowledge they're like, yeah, on a given night, like, you know, maybe like 40% are non-Asian even. You right. know, of or, my or Korean in some select spots, Andrew, maybe even seventy percent of the crowd. Yeah. Right? So, so I think that what this guy's saying, he just misses those days. He misses the good old days. Those where, good old days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think that is a sentiment that everybody's feeling. If you remember the good old days of anything, times have changed, whether for the better or worse, or better for the macro but maybe worse in a super micro. So I don't know. Either way, I kind of see what he's saying because even 10 years ago, there was like, you know, more Korean exclusive nightclubs in LA and New York that would kind of discriminate against you if you weren't Korean, even if you were like Chinese. You know, now that's not the case. Now it's almost like... Yeah, like the Chinese, they always buy like the most bottles. Yeah. That is the way it has changed no, over the I last would say, 15 years. I would say, uh, and maybe not for the Korea boo aspect, but Chinese are heavily in K-Town. But I think that's just because they like... I like actually, yeah, yeah. Space. We're going to get into that later. I think a lot of Chinese, they party in K-Town, but they don't necessarily, some of them are, but not, they're not necessarily Korea booze. Right. That's not, like for the non-Asians. Right, yeah. right, right. Anyway, let's just get into it. Um, Man, a few quick thoughts. Every game plan has pros and cons, Right. Like, if you run a soft power game plan that really appeals to outside tribes, you know, not just your own because Korea is a small country, they need to export K-pop. For example, J-pop, very large domestic market. They don't export it as much for mm. economic reasons or there's no necessity to. Eventually, it reaches this point where other people, they start to take 
I don't want to say ownership of it, but somewhat, right? Because they've consumed so much of it, they start to feel like their K-pop or their Korean. Yeah. Almost like how hip hop spread black American culture to the point where people thought they were part black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think it's uh it is really interesting that it's reaching that point. And I think that the issue here is that because uh they're Asian. A lot of people, a lot of like non-Asians are not afraid to maybe sound a little bit, uh, and I don't want to say entitled, what's it? Uh, You're saying that they're not handling their appropriation with the same velvet gloves they might handle uh, black hip hop appropriation yeah, with. Yeah, essentially that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's a good point. Somebody was saying that um, the roller coaster ride that Korean culture had in America is insane all the way from the Korean War and obviously then uh, I believe that's when North Korea and South Korea split and then boom, it just went through all these crazy ups and downs and for it to be regarded as the new Japan in terms of like soft power, you know how Japan has been popping for like, they had that song, I'm turning Japanese, I'm turning Japanese. And what was that, like the 80s? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For them to go through that arc is insane. And that's what might be causing that feeling of this guy like having, like the roller coaster of like how his perception is in the larger culture is, is so crazy yeah, for Yeah, I mean, put it this way. 15 years ago, I think most kids in America didn't really know what, South Korea was all about. And now 15 years later, they can point at a ton of content, media, and food. That's Korean, you know? Yeah. Anyway, let's get into the comments section, guys. Like we said, we are not subject matter experts on this. Um, but yeah, I thought it was an interesting discussion because we noticed it. Somebody said, having a trendy culture is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it helps in terms of representation, economics, and ego. On the other hand, the culture gets der derivatives and exploited. The cost of soft power is making the culture consumable, and K-culture is all about that. The good and bad consequences of inviting white people in are inseparable. Uh, yeah, I don't want to just blame it on white people, but obviously white people being the dominant group in America, I guess that's tends to be the focus, but yeah, I mean, I feel like Chinese culture has been through multiple waves in America of kind of trendiness. You know, back in the sixties, Chinese restaurants were very, very trendy, right? You're talking like about Bruce Lee too? 1970s, you know, over in the Bay area, I forgot her name, uh, Chang, uh, the mother of PF Chang's. PF Chang's, the mother of PF Chang's. Um, but anyways, it's like, it's like. When your culture gets popular in this society, there's no way it doesn't get commoditized. And it, there's no way it doesn't get fetishized on some level. And when it's it gets commoditized, it's just every culture that's popular, and whether it's Jamaican culture, black American hip hop culture, Chinese culture, whatever, even Indian culture on a, a certain level has gets the, the yoga and the yeah, like Karma Namaste. Sutra. And you know what I'm saying? It's just bound to happen. And that is, I guess, kind of the process of being part of America. Right, because you're saying when it's commoditized, it's like if we could visualize culture getting bagged up in a little bags on the shelf and you're almost like in a candy land, what's that called? Sweet factory. And you're like picking, mixing, matching. You're like, ooh, oh, look at the Korean section. It's really booming at uh, the sweet factory. And you're like putting all these into a bag. It's like, you, you, when, when a culture is commoditized, you're breaking it into these bite-sized parts that are sort of authentic, but not really because it's the sweet saccharin version of it. Yeah, I mean, if you wear a chi pao and you eat a fortune cookie, is that is that the most pinnacle? Like, do you understand Chinese culture? You know what I mean? <laughs> right, you do some kung fu. And, yeah. Uh, um, somebody said, all of this makes sense and is valid, except that South Korea did this. They were the ones that pushed Korean soft power. Koreans were the ones to originally fetishize Korean culture. You can't reap the benefits of the rise of Korean soft power if you want to keep non-Koreans out of your space. You can be inclusive or exclusive, not both. You need to decide. This was from Daisy Estudante, basically uh, an Indian guy. I will tell you this. South Korea, whatever this issue and this rant that this South, this, this Korean American feels, I don't think South Korea is worrying about it. You're talking about people in, Korea. in South Korea. Yeah, I think the, the, all the managers and creators and company heads and CEOs in Korea who are making all these moves happen. For example, the Samsung board of directors. Yeah, I think they're just happy. They're just like, yeah, this is what it is. They're like, y'all, yeah, like, you know. You know, Korean culture, they get better and, you know, the country right, like, come like up. the more people, like, yeah. we got a chance to, like, it's just, beat, beat Japan. Like, that it, is what we are concerned about. Yeah, it's partially that this guy is this Korean-American, a.k.a. Asian-American, and this is one of those so kind of weird spaces for an Asian-American where you're like, damn, I'm, like, Asian, but I'm seeing my heritage, my traditional heritage kind of commoditized. How do I feel about that? While Koreans in South Korea are probably like, because obviously Ooh. Koreans from South Korea, they're not worrying about small dwindling enclaves in like large American cities, right? Because they're like, 
yeah, like they're just going to move to Powell Park or Fort Lee or uh, La Kenyatta or something, a more Korean ethno burb, right? Chinatowns have not, tra the traditional Chinatowns have not been the hub of Chinese culture, I think, for a like in a way a decade. Like, you know what I mean? Where there's the suburbs, Flushing, right. there's 626 SGV. Those are even more so the hubs. Yeah. In a I way. mean, doesn't it kind of go to show you as something becomes more popular? It's not always good for like every single group in the diaspora in every single way. For example, Andrew, I know some Taiwanese Americans as the 626 night market grew and spread around the country, they were like, they stopped serving stinky tofu because that was turning off a lot of the demographics. But uh -huh. the, the Taiwanese were like, but yeah, 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 that's what makes that like 626 night market Taiwanese is the tofu. Right, right, But they right, had right. to take it away, right, for the marketability. Of course, Andrew, there was a bunch of people posting saying like, I'm Korean, I agree. Somebody said, let's be honest, guys. It was the Chinese the Chinese and Thai people, they were the ones who took the spaces. How true is this, man? There because are a lot of Chinese patrons. There's a lot of Chinese people who like Korean culture, at least eat in Koreatown. I think they like the vibes. Like, you know what I mean? Even more, like, I do think, like, Dude, Chinese taste buds, they'd rather eat chuar over gochujang with hey. Xinjiang cumin on it. But, like, they, they, I think Koreans, the way they interpersonally ping and create, like, fun venues, Chinese... They can't do it. Right, right, right. So that's why they consume there and they spend the money. Somebody said, as a nerdy Southeast, Southeast Asian male, I got it uh, pretty bad. This is my vent that ever, as everybody has said that Asians have come up as a nerdy Southeast Asian guy, I got nothing. So that's my vent. Mm. How much is this interesting, Andrew, that everybody is saying like in this whole macro representation of like K-pop coming up or Asian culture coming up in CRA, there are groups or specific subgroups sub subgroups within groups they got left out yeah no definitely uh a lot of groups benefited more than others um i still think it is still better for him in general i think it's still better for every single asian a little bit i just think that the impact might not be as significant and as game changing for sure right you're saying it was a rising tide but the tide was not because the more people who understand what even an asian is even if even if this guy's like, let's just say like Lao or Cambodian, right? One of the lesser known Asian groups, like, like people are still interested in Asians more period. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It might not be Korean or Chinese or whatever. One of the big ones, but you know I, what I mean? I, especially I think as a nerdy Southeast Asian guy, from what I've seen in the Southeast Asian world, the nerdy play, like the gamer, you know, top level pro gamer vibe doesn't work as well, even as it would in the East yeah, Asian world, yeah, to yeah, be yeah. honest. That's true. Knowing how that world works. Um, this guy said, this girl said, I'm Chinese and I feel like white people who are into Asian culture, they rank each Asian culture in terms of coolness, then they pit us against each other and then we buy into their hierarchy of how they rank us. And then somebody said, yep, Chinese are the most hated low-key in America right now easily because we don't have anything cool and modern that people would want, unlike Japanese or Koreans. And then somebody said, don't forget about us Muslim Desis too, like Muslim South Asians, Bangladeshis. They were saying that, uh, yep, we get hated too. Yeah, you know what I'd say about Chinese being the most hated? I feel like in the macro, the Chinese is the most feared. But on an individual basis, there's still so many Chinese people embedded in like, every city that I, it's hard to say that they're hated all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like people are still going to eat traditional Chinese hot pot all the time. That is straight from China. People are still consuming Chinese products all the time. Yeah. But in a coolness sense, I see what they're saying. I, I know what you're saying in an overall, cause it's almost like, yeah, it's hard to basically ascribe a movement to what's happening to Chinese people because there's so many, I, I, so I many do 25, I do 25, 25, 25, 25 splits. It's safe to say Koreans are the coolest right now, though. Yeah, in the yeah. cool world, like if somebody says, yo, I got a new DJ that's Chinese, people are not going to be as interested to hear, oh, I got a new DJ that's Korean. Everybody's like, oh, let me, let me give it a listen at least, see what, check it out. Um, somebody said... I'm Korean and I feel like all the success that we've been having is actually building up some resentment within other Asians because they have started to call us racist and rude with their anecdotes. Hey, man, I, I think the racist and rude anecdotes have been around for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah, I mean, I, for I me, think it's better now. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I think the relationships are better now. I would say, to be honest, as far as just like relationships with Korean people go. I, the, some of the most love I've ever gotten was from Korean people, but some of the most unwarranted, like hateful spite definitely was also from Korean people. Yeah, I yeah, just feel yeah. like they're very like up and down.
That's my general opinion, knowing like a thousand of them. Um, somebody said, I'm so sick of the judgment from within my own community as a Korean. That's my vent. Basically saying that like as the whole Korean wave has taken place, some Korean Americans, they don't even fit with it. Yeah, that's true. Not all Korean Americans fit into this K-pop, K-drama look. This girl said, I'm Vietnamese, my husband is Japanese, and everybody views us so differently when they perceive us through the lens of our culture. For example, our white friends, they always want to ask them about the bullet trains and all these movies that they've seen about Japan, but when I bring up anything about Vietnam, they complete the conversation with the white families completely go silent. Mm. And then she said, on the flip side, when we went to the Japan Festival in our town, San Jose, there was only like seven Japanese people who showed up out of 300. And then we went to the Viet Cultural Festival, and that was about 95% Viet, which gave me peace. So she's saying, basically, it's just the pros and the cons of it all. Mm. Yo, that was a really, really interesting comment. And last but not least, Andrew, this Korean guy said to this Korean poster, the original OP, and said, what you're describing is essentially Han, the feeling of sorrow and resentment that you cannot entirely put your finger on. And I guess this is uh, the feeling of Han is a very Korean sort of morose thing driven by, I guess, centuries of ups and downs, but mostly downs, Yeah, apparently. You know, my overall takeaway is my message to people like him who kind of resent the Korean wave not that I think he would turn the hands of time backwards. Right, you're saying he wouldn't hit the reversal button. You would still take it because it's a net positive, of course, but it's just not the most comfortable. It's like it's like when something good happens to you, but it's not like entirely good, but it's overall good. You'll take it, you know? It's like, uh, yeah, it's like if you got promoted at work, you make more money, you got promoted, you got a higher position, but then you got way more responsibilities and you got to work more hours. It's yeah. like... You take it, though. How right? much of it is just individual positioning, though? Let's say, for example, there's a family of Korean people or a, a group of Korean friends, and everybody won a million dollars in the lottery, and you won 50000 Technically, you're still up 50000 from zero, which is a yeah. significant sum, but everybody else won a million. When there would be some humanistic feeling yeah. of like, dang, they got that. And I got this. You know, like, dude, honestly, and I'm not saying it is, I don't know who this OP is, but like, what if he is on the more like introverted, like lonely Korean guy side, and then he's seeing all these more social, like cool Korean guys benefiting like five times as much from this wave, bringing all these people to the Korean spots and having fun. And he's feeling a little left out of it because he can't benefit from it as much. I guess my recommendation is, try to benefit from it more because any Korean person who's selling a Korean product or is considered a cool Korean, I'll be honest, they have to be considered a cool Korean. And there's is, usually two types of cool yeah. Koreans, right? There's the one that looks like kind of like uh, more Fobby, Fobby yeah. K-pop, K-drama, and then the more like broed out one. Yeah, but whatever it is, if you're trying to sell something that's from your culture right now, now is a great time. But he again, he may not have anything in the works like that. You know what I mean? Right, so, right, right. I guess I can feel his pain. You know, I, I see what he's saying. I think I've seen it happen in the past 10 years. Every observation eyes. he had is 100% right. logical and probably there's some statistics if we could get the stats. Yeah, and then also throw on the fact that we're Asian so people are not afraid to explain our culture to us. You know what I mean? Right. They're a little bit more liberal with the commodification. She's like, oh yeah, well, you know, I spent two weeks in Seoul and then, and then you're like, yeah, I'm Korean. I get it, you know. But then also they don't see you as a Korean American as representing Korea. Because maybe in a way you don't technically. Right. Because that's you, like somebody, that's like a, oh, what if, I mean, there's white people out there who know Chinese way better than me, who have probably studied Chinese culture more than me too. Yeah. Like the history. So it's like, what if they're explaining something to me? Am I supposed to take that with offense? Depends on how they're saying it. Yeah. I mean, last but not least, Andrew, let's just bring it back to Chinese. What do you think about the comments? Because this was a long thread. We didn't even get to everything where they were like, yeah, guys, I could see the pros and cons of that soft power approach because everybody wants in now like the Japanese, but it's better than everybody just thinking you're too outdated and uncool. Yeah. Or, or the geopolitical enemy. Yeah. 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 I mean, like we said, guys, I'm not saying everybody got to consider like everybody else's situation. You know, it's sort of like the Vietnamese and the Japanese couple that was like in the comment section. You, it's all, man, everybody born into a tribe. The tribe made certain decisions or, or maybe their indecision was a, still a decision. And that's how the cultural game plan for that dias diasporic wave Took place. Yeah, I feel like it's people needing they people need to lean hard into a lane to be distinctive. So what I mean by that is like if you're, for example, a Chinese person who can appear to be part of the 
like part of Chinese, the Chinese government and you act like it, a lot of people are going to view you as part of the Chinese government. So then you're going to suffer from that imagery. But like, you talking about if you get the box. Yeah, but I don't think people confuse me for being part of the Chinese government. Right, because I'm so Americanized and I maybe act different or look different or whatever, right. dress different, right? Same with being Korean. Like, if you're on the edge, you're going to feel really uncomfortable. But you are, if you were on the extreme end of looking like a K-pop guy or being some cool Korean person sending, having a, opening up a business that can benefit from it, then, then you're going to like it. Yeah. I mean, long story short, I think that's a good way of ending it in terms of just a functional strategic move. Is like, I noticed that as video games became more popular, everybody like, is looking at life like video game archetypes. And like you said, when you shoot a gap a little bit harder and it's more discernible to your average normie person, they can fit you in that archetype. And hopefully it's a positive one that vibes with the context. So anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Viral thread from Reddit. A lot of interesting discussions. Valid points on all sides. Debate in the comments section. Keep it civil. Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.